Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of my video tutorial series about OpenRC. Today's video is going to primarily be focused on the Etsy rc.conf file, which is the main global configuration file for the OpenRC system. Now this rc.conf file may exist on non-OpenRC systems, that is there may be a file etsy rc.conf on your system whether you have OpenRC or not, but on OpenRC this particular file is extremely important because it is where you will set all of your global variables for OpenRC as well as a few other things. Now to start things off here, I'm just going to go ahead and open the file so that you can see it. As you can see, I'm already in the Etsy directory. So we'll just go ahead and open rc.conf here and take a look at the file. And so here it is. As you can see, this is a pretty sizable file. This is just the default rc.conf file totally unmodified that you would get if you were to go through the process of installing Gentoo Fresh on a new computer. I'm using an unmodified OpenRC file here for demonstration purposes. If you haven't changed anything in OpenRC yourself and you're using Gentoo, then your file should be exactly the same as this one I'm working with here. Now as you can see there's a lot of text here, but one thing that might stand out to you is how many comments there are. That's because the rc.conf file is not just a configuration file. Really it's a configuration file in addition to being a piece of documentation on the OpenRC system. Every single entry here in the rc.conf file is heavily commented to explain what the purpose of it is and how to use it. And this is very good for the typical OpenRC user because all you have to do is open this file and read through it to learn a lot of information about what you can change and about what OpenRC does by default without your intervention. This file is broadly divided into four sections. The first section, which you're seeing here at the top, is the, is the global OpenRC configuration settings. The settings defined here in this large section will determine the behavior of OpenRC system-wide, and they usually affect things like boot up and behavior with regards to run levels in OpenRC. And as you can probably guess, this section about configuring OpenRC is the one that we're primarily concerned with. But before I get into describing what some of the settings here do, let me just quickly go over the other three sections that are in this file. Now, the second section in rc.conf is called miscellaneous configuration variables, and the description reads that these are variables that are shared by many init scripts. These variables basically help to set up the environment that all of your various OpenRC init scripts are going to run in. For instance, the very first variable listed in this section reads Unicode equals yes, and the description above that says set Unicode to yes to turn on Unicode support for keyboards and screens. Basically setting Unicode to yes here will let any init script that cares about the status of Unicode on the system know that Unicode is enabled here and it should behave accordingly. This section is much smaller than the OpenRC global configuration section and so we'll just go ahead and go past it real quick to the next one which is the service configuration variables section. Now I mentioned before that rc.conf is both a configuration file and a piece of documentation for the OpenRC system. And that is most evident here in the service configuration variables section. Because what this section has is a bunch of variables that are meant to be set individually for particular init scripts. As you can see, the description of the service configuration variables section reads, these variables are documented here but should be configured in Etsy conf d foo for service foo and not enabled here unless you really want them to work on a global basis. What this is saying is the directory Etsy conf d contains configuration files for individual OpenRC init scripts. They're not the same as the actual scripts which are being run, which are in the Etsy init.d directory, as I mentioned in my first OpenRC video. Rather, these conf d files define things like the particular environment that a script should run in. There would be a conf.d file for like your net service for your internet connection. And there would be a conf.d file for things like your DHCP service if that was being managed by OpenRC or what have you. Any particular init script that you have can have a conf.d file with some environment variables set in it. And those environment variables are actually documented here in this service configuration variable section of the rc.conf file. Now I'm not going to go over this section very much right now. We will actually get more into conf.d in a future video where I'm going to cover 
writing your own init scripts. But right now we'll just blow on past this to the last section that's in the rc.com file, the Linux C groups resource management. Everything that's in this short section will determine how OpenRC interacts with Linux C groups, which is a kernel level resource management system that Linux provides. C groups is out of the scope of this tutorial, so I'm just going to introduce this section here and let you know that it's in the file. The variables that are set here are just like those that are set in the global RC configuration file section. So what I'm about to teach you about that section will apply to the variables here, but it's all very simple. Let's go back to the top of the file and I'll go over some of the global configuration settings that you might actually want to mess with yourself. One of the great things about OpenRC is that the entire system itself is very, very simple to configure. You really pretty much just have what's going on in this file. Whatever changes you make to this file here are just going to apply system-wide to everything that OpenRC touches. And the documentation makes it easy to see what your changes are actually going to do. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you just for an example is the RC logger configuration variable here. If you set RC logger to yes, as you can see here, it says that this will cause OpenRC to launch a logging daemon to log the entire RC process to this location var log rc.log. This might be useful if you were doing something like testing a new init script that you wrote yourself, or if you just wanted to have lots more information about what OpenRC is actually doing whenever you power on your computer. Now, as you can see here, this setting is actually commented out, and whatever the commented out setting is set to, it's going to be the default value that OpenRC treats this variable as having. As you can see, RC logger is by default set to no. Now, if we wanted to turn on the RC logger system and get OpenRC to log its process, we can simply uncomment this variable and then change no here to, in all caps, yes. And with that, RC logger is on. And the next time that I boot up this PC, it will log everything that it does to this var log rc.log location. Or optionally, you can actually change that location with the next setting, which is RC log path. You could uncomment this line here and change this string here to some other location on your system to make RC logger log all of its information to that particular file instead. Now one setting that you may actually be very interested in turning on yourself is located here at the very top of the file, the RC parallel setting. Now, as the comment above says, you can set RC parallel to yes if you want the RC system to try and start services in parallel for a slight speed improvement. By default, OpenRC is just going to start all the processes that it starts whenever it enters a particular run level in series, that is one after another. But you can speed up the process of OpenRC starting processes and thus speed up boot time by setting RC parallel here to yes. And it's the same as with the other variable. We simply uncomment it and change no to yes. And that will cause RC parallel, that is to say it will cause OpenRC to start processes in parallel the next time I boot up this PC. Now as you can see here in the comments above, there is a warning that says whilst we have improved parallel, it can still potentially lock the boot process. Starting processes in parallel introduces, to use an analogy, more moving parts, meaning that there can be sometimes some problems with some processes that don't like to be started in parallel. So just keep that in mind if you choose to enable this setting on your system. Normally the speed boost that RC Parallel gives is kind of minuscule unless you have very many processes that you need to start, especially shortly after boot time. But it's still one of the settings in the rc.conf file that many people are interested in turning on. That about does it for a brief description of the rc.conf file. But before I go, I do actually want to show you what the contents of the conf.d directory looks like. Now, I was talking about this earlier, but the conf.d directory contains configuration files for individual OpenRC init scripts. And let's take a look at it here. As you can see, there are many individual files here and most of them are fairly small. Let's take a quick look at, say, the ntpd conf.d file. This is a pretty good example of what all of the conf.d files look like in general. Usually they just contain a listing of different options that are going to be passed to any given init script. However, as I said before, the settings that are located in the conf.d documentation section of rc.com have lots of variables that you can actually plug into these individual conf.d scripts. Now you'll want to read the descriptions that are above each of those variables in rc.com before you try to add them to a conf.d init script configuration file so that you make sure you understand what you're doing. And as I said, we will go over conf.d files again, probably in slightly more detail in a future video 
where I cover actually making your own init scripts for OpenRC. One thing I should point out, not every single init script located at say Etsy init.d is going to have a corresponding conf.d configuration file. Init scripts don't have to have them sometimes. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But if you have some init script that you're messing with and you go look for its conf.d file and don't find it there, that's just something to keep in mind. All right, and that about does it for this video. Hopefully with that, you should have all the skills that you need to mess with OpenRC's global configurations in rc.com. As I said, rc.com is itself really a good piece of documentation, and you can learn a lot about how OpenRC works just by reading through the file and figuring out what each of the individual settings does. But hopefully with this video and the other two videos in this series, you will have a great many tools that you need to accomplish what you want to accomplish with the OpenRC system. I will be making some more videos on OpenRC pretty soon, so stay tuned for those. But until then, I will see you next time, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.